Instagram. Hello to our friends on Facebook. Tanji here. It is Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome to Mindset Mastery Monday. I usually do this session at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but this morning I was doing a leadership training for the Harcourts Victorian business owners. So we decided to do it tonight. And tonight's whole theme is my uh, Open Mic Monday. It's where you just jump on and you can share any questions, issues, challenges, or concerns that you are currently dealing with. Get Hey Mickey, how are you, Mickey? Happy Monday. How was your day, my friend? Uh, it's Open Mic Monday, uh, so Mickey, feel free if you have any current issues, challenges, or concerns in business or life, and you could just really handle some complimentary peak performance coaching. Then I'm absolutely here for you. So uh, today's theme is open. It's up to you, but I want to start by just um, you know sharing a reflection I had before coming live which is uh, when we don't feel like doing stuff, how that influences what we do. Do you often find that you don't feel like it? I don't feel like getting up early. I don't feel like getting out of bed. I don't feel like prospecting. I don't feel like talking to that person. I don't feel like cleaning up. I don't feel like doing whatever it is. How often do you tell yourself that you don't feel like it? And how often do you listen and succumb to that feeling? I know for me, I'm a bit sleep deprived. I've been burning the candle at both ends, but it's predominantly been the work end of the last two weeks and I'm, I am physically tired. I'm very much looking forward to taking the face off. I wanna have a bath and I wanna hit the hay early and catch up on some Zs. And you know, sometimes we don't feel like doing stuff, but when we have a why that propels us forward, that pulls us to take an action, we don't let our feelings get in the way. So that would be the first thing I would say is, upon reflection, where are we asking ourselves? Or don't feel like it. Hey chauffeur, nanny in the house, how are you? Happy, uh, happy day on Instagram. Welcome to Mindset Mastery Monday at 8 p.m. Monday evening rather than 8 a.m. Uh, it's Open Mic Monday, so you can ask me anything. Ask me anything about your business. And ask me anything you're willing to ask personally. Ask me anything about myself. Um, hello, Harcourts, Victoria, Vanessa. How are you, my love? Hope you had a beautiful rest of the day. Thanks for the opportunity to come and be a contribution to you and your leadership team. We are, we, you typically do Mindset Mastery Monday on a Monday morning um, at 8 a.m., but we're doing it at 8 p.m. And it's Open Mic Monday. Um, one of the things that I was taught, meaning Open Mic Monday, meaning just throw in your issues, challenges, or concerns, uh, cues, and I'll do my best to provide some A's. One of the, Luke Hemming, Hey Tanja, hope you're well. Yes, Luke. Thank you, my friend. Luke, I want to know what's keeping you up at night, my friend. What are your challenges, issues, concerns that you'd be willing to share? What are you stuck with? Even if you ask on behalf of somebody else. Um, uh, we've got nine weeks to go to the end of the financial year. I'm really sorry for getting um, reflection glare off my glasses, but if I don't have these on because I took my contacts off, I won't be able to read your comments. So Luke, I'm keen to know, do you have any questions, issues, concerns, or anything at all that's on your mind that perhaps I can give you a hand with? One of the things that I spoke about this morning at the Harcourts Business uh, Owners meeting, thanks to Vanessa and the team, was this whole thing about how much time we spend you know, stressing, worrying, and anxious and concerned about the things that we can't control. Uh, and it's really important that you take stock of how much of your time you spend in the things that you cannot directly influence because it will zap your energy, it will drain your focus, it will inhibit your ability to make effective decisions, and it will affect your mojo and your motivation. So, you know, a lot of when I ask this question, a lot of people say anywhere from 20 to 90 percent, the average tends to sit about 50 to 60 percent of the time. So what can you do with that time and what can you focus on? And in real estate at the moment, it's either a reasons or it's a results game. You've either got a lot of reasons why you're not performing or you're actually getting some results. Here's the thing that I notice a lot of people do, though. We over promise and under deliver. We make our expectations way too big and then we actually aren't doing the daily small chunks time after time, day after day to build that compound effect and actually get somewhere. So if you're feeling stuck, like you're not getting anywhere, or if you're oscillating in any area of your business or your life, 
It's highly likely that you don't have a strategy to do the small little things to consistently build momentum and accumulate the results. Hey Shane, Anthony, how are you? Thanks for jumping on. We are doing Mindset Mastery Monday. It's Open Mic Monday where you can just ask a question uh, about business, life, leadership, communication, conflict resolution, uh, entrepreneurialism, mindset mastery, anything at all, and I'll provide my best um, uh, answer to your question. Uh, one of the questions that I've been asked is, I know what to do, but I lack the motivation to do it. And when I lack the motivation to do it, I... Um, uh, I then kind of feel negative or I beat myself up for not doing it. And then we, he, uh, it's like getting an emotional quicksand. So you know what to do and you're not doing it. Then you beat yourself up for not doing it. And then we just get to be right that we're not good enough, which is a fundamental belief of being human, right? It's actually really, really tricky. And it's noisy in there. Luke's just written something, which I'm going to come to. Luke. I think I'll sit and listen to what you're chatting about as I'm still awaiting the outcome of the OFT decision. Ah, but as you said moments ago, you cannot, you cannot overthink things we cannot control. Excited to see where the live forum goes tonight. Keep up the awesome work. It's a bit quiet tonight, my friend. Um, it is a little bit quiet. So, um, you know, your questions are very, very welcome. But, yes, I understand that um, there are many things that are playing on our mind and uh, a lot of the things that are out of our control, we just need to quiet the mind. So uh, you, you can sit back and listen, Luke, but we'll see if there's any questions. I'm just going to share some things that I'm observing that are um, getting in people's way or impacting them. And if you've got a question, then I'm here for you, but we will, we will keep it brief tonight. And you know what? Here's the thing that I said even this morning in the leadership training. Great leaders have fewer messages, but they repeat them often. So as you uh, think to yourself what it is that you want to achieve for yourself in your life, we need to constantly remind ourselves of what matters and what's important because we're not going to feel like a lot of the time. If I haven't mentioned this to you before, I highly recommend you get the book The Miracle Morning by Hal Alrod. It's an amazing book. The guy has literally died three times. One time he was dead for six minutes. He was told he would never walk again and he bet the odds and walked again. And now he's just navigated cancer. And what Hal Alrod has done, and I've mentioned this before, is in his book he talks about the fact that there are six key things that if we do every morning, whether it's for six minutes or 60 minutes, it will transform the way we experience ourselves, others and the world. And those six things can be broken down in an acronym called SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S, -E silence or meditation, affirmation, affirming who you are, absolutely critical. We've got to be careful what we say because we are listening. Visualization, statistics show that if we have a vision or a vision board or digital vision board for what we want for ourselves in our life, we increase our chances of achieving it by 67%. E is for exercise. Uh, R is for reading or listening to podcasts. S is for and Hal did his research on what constitutes the most successful people. He saw that the most successful people, not just wealthy people, but people going through great endurance, athletes, you know, peak performers, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, game changers, they did either one, two or three of these six things. They never did all six things together. So he said, well, wonder what would happen if we did all six so savers, if you want access to peak performance, if you want to rise resilient in a world of rejection that happens in real estate, I highly recommend you get the book, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. There is a copy specifically for real estate professionals as well. So the uh, one, as I said, an earlier question I was asked was, I know what to do. I lack the motivation to do it. And then I'm feeling really depressed. The only thing that's going to get you out is action because we're never going to feel like it. We're never going to feel like it. I, to be honest, didn't feel like doing this before doing it because I'm sleep deprived and I needed to get my, I needed to shift my state and get into state to get up and actually be available and be of service. And I'm showing up whether there's one person or a hundred people, I will show up because I said I would. And that's what makes a really empowered operator is when we go beyond our excuses. So the, that's the first part. 
is go beyond how you feel. The action will supersede the feeling and then you'll feel different because you took an action. But then the next part is stop over-promising and under-delivering. I have a client who um, wants to lose 20 kilos and we created a game, but the game felt really overwhelming. So we chunked the game down to just two weeks. What's an action that needs, she needs to take for two weeks and just do that daily action for two weeks and win the two-week game. She's unrecognizable to herself. She's up and out at I think 5.55, sending me accountability selfies every single morning and the woman's on fire. Paula Beavis is uh, online from Bali. Happy 40th, my beautiful friend. Paula sent me um, a selfie today of her planning her life. Poolside, nice one. Uh, so Paula, my love, do you have a question from Bali? We're doing open mic Mindset Mastery Monday, Q and A's. I'm going to keep it open for a few more minutes and then I'm going to wrap up this Monday. It's a little quiet tonight. Usually, oh, how do I get past subconscious, unconscious, emotional baggage holding me back? Ah, show for nanny. Bloody good questions, so show for nanny. How do I get past subconscious, unconscious, emotional baggage holding me back? This is what I do for a living <laughs> is that very thing. The first thing I would say is um, you have awareness. So the good thing is, Shofa Nanny, you're saying, I'm aware that I have conscious and I probably have some unconscious emotional baggage that's holding me back. That shows me that you're willing to take responsibility and you're aware that, oh, okay, that's what's going on for me. Now, how do I get past it? There are a number of ways you can get past it. And in many cases, it's easier said than done. But I'm going to keep it really simple. We, hey, Steve. Hey, Bailey. How are you, my friend? Open mic Monday. Ask me anything and I'll provide my best cue. At the moment, we're, we're having a chat with Shofa Nanny, whose question is, thanks, by the way, Shofa Nanny, how do I get past subconscious, unconscious, emotional baggage holding me back? James Roderick, Welcome. A, you have awareness. So yay, yay you. Most of us aren't even aware. We just walk around in a shitty state and blaming others why we don't feel great. Okay, so you have awareness that something is holding your back and that you know it's your subconscious, it's your unconscious and you want to do something about it. Awesome start, okay? B, typically what holds us back is what's back in the past. So the reason why we're stuck in the past is because typically what we do so show for Nanny and everybody else watching is we collapse what happened with what we make it mean about ourselves. And this is the fundamental thing that gets in the way of our, us being empowered. Stuff has happened in your past and it could be on the spectrum of traumatic or simple and something in between. But I promise you with great love and respect, no matter what's happened to you in the past, it is not what's happened that defines you, it's what you decided as a result. So Shofa Nanny, here's what I would invite you to do. If you know there's stuff holding you back consciously and subconsciously, get a piece of paper and you can timeline all the major things Positive if you like, but let's look at the negative. Timeline all the negative things that happened to you in your life. Just write them down, bullet points, no big kumbaya, love and war, peace novel, just the big things that happened. A, B, I then want you to write, get a Sydney property team, I then want you to write, what did you decide? What was the belief? What did you, what did you decide as a result? And once you get that belief out of your head or off your chest, or off your back and on the paper, you have what's called a disassociated relationship with it. So you can look at it and go, cool, okay. So when I was seven, that happened and I made it mean that. And is that the truth? And it's not the truth. We are meaning making machines. We walk around adding meaning to everything. How do I know? I do it too, but I'm aware that I do it. I'm aware that I do it and I stop myself doing it. So timeline the significant things that have happened and write down what have you made it mean. And then I want you to ask yourself, is that true what I've made it mean? Like is it really true? And is this belief, and this is the really key question, is this belief empowering me or disempowering me? Typically, if you feel held back, the answer is it's disempowering you. And that's what you've got to be responsible for, that you're holding on to a belief that's disempowering you and that is your choice. Now, there are five reasons why we would hold on to disempowering beliefs that we know don't serve us, that hold us back and limit our potential being fulfilled. This is the five handbrakes of our unconscious mind. I've gone through them before, but I will do this 
every hour upon the hour, five, seven days a week if I need to, because this is the stuff that gets you in action. By the way, show for Nanny, if this is making sense, can you give me a sign, give me a, you know, a, a smiley face or a question mark or a poo emoji if it's not making sense at all. Hey, Mandy Wilson. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Lovely to see you here. Q&A Tuesday, ask me anything about anything, anything you're challenged by or anything you, you want to know. And by the way, if you're watching this live, please type in live. And if you are watching the record, type in the record. Show for Nanny's giving me a thumbs up. These are the three handbrakes that get in the way of us fulfilling our potential. These are the things that will unconsciously sabotage our success, even like Show for Nanny said, I know I have subconscious and probably unconscious beliefs that are holding me back. How do I get past it? You have to, thanks Sydney property team, you have to ask yourself these things or you have to check in these things. These are the things. If you've got pen and paper, write these down. Number one, the reason we get stuck in the past with the shitty beliefs of the things that happened when we were two, three, four, five, seven, fourteen at school, when we got our heart broken, when our parents did this or someone did that, the reason we stay in that emotional quicksand is because of this. We get to be right about the crap beliefs we decided about ourselves. We get to be right. We get to be right about who we are, who others are, and how the world is. That's the first benefit that our saboteur gets out of keeping us stuck in that quicksand. The second one is we get to avoid responsibility. We get to blame others or a situation and not do anything about it. So we just get to avoid responsibility of doing anything about it. We get to stay there and suffer. Number three. We get to stay safe and comfortable in familiar territory that we don't like, but we stay there. Does that make sense? That's like when you see people in a relationship that doesn't serve them, but they stay in it. It's because it's what they know and it's safe and comfortable. You don't like it. It's not empowering you. It's not fulfilling you. It's not enabling you to grow, but you stay there. We choose to be safe and comfortable in familiar territory, even though we don't like it. See which ones are resonating for you the most. Number four, we get to be a victim. We get to, and a victim definition is we believe that we don't have the power to change our external circumstances. We are at the mercy of external things. We get to live our life like we are powerless. And so why are we addicted to being right about the shitty beliefs we decided from things that happened in the past about ourselves, others in the world? Why are we avoiding responsibility for stepping up and showing up and doing what we know we could do to really change our lives and change our state and contribute to others? Why do we stay safe and comfortable in familiar territory that we don't like, that we don't enjoy, that really has an inevitable end result of unfulfillment? Why do we choose to be a victim consciously or unconsciously and act like we don't have the power and, and put all the power externally? Ultimately, here's what's really familiar between you and I. Our blood is the same color, even though our, we look different on the outside. But the other thing that you and I share completely to varying degrees is because of things that happened in the past, we've decided we're not good enough. And when we believe we're not good enough, we create significance. We create drama, we create chaos, we create a swirl, we create a noise so we can have our life mean something. It's completely counterintuitive. It's not why we came here and we are doing it unconsciously, subconsciously, and that's our ego. Our ego is just the wounded child that didn't get what we wanted to get when we were kids or growing up. We put on an armor and we go through life we think that's the way it is. And then all of the subconscious beliefs get AD. You're going to love this conversation. We had this one recently. Thanks for joining. Then all those subconscious beliefs completely influence how we see ourselves, others in the world, what we do and what we create. So show for Nanny, does that make sense? If you're wanting clarity on the subconscious and unconscious beliefs that are holding you back, get a piece of paper, do a timeline, write down the key things that happened to you and then I want you to write down the belief or the decision that you made about yourself when that thing happened. I want you to then do a stock take. Is this belief empowering me or disempowering me? Is it holding me back or moving me forward? And then make a choice to create an empowering belief 
because when you consciously become aware that a belief from the past is holding you back and you choose to stay there, then that's a conscious choice. And you'll only choose that if one of those five things are a greater currency for you than something else. Show for Nanny, does that make sense? Does that make sense to everyone? Tell me, just write down, what did you get from that? What did you hear? Awesome, says Stephen. Stephen, tell me, what did you get from that? What did you get from that conversation? Because I promise you, we're not going to feel like doing stuff. We have stuff from the past holding us back and we know it's holding us back and we stay there. And I, no strategy, no TED talk, no coach, no book, no, nothing is going to work unless we change our definition. Show for Nanny, what is an example of an empowering belief? All right, Show for Nanny, let's do the work. Send me a disempowering belief that you have. All right, and, and let's just do a round of applause for Show for Nanny for doing the work live on Instagram um, and on Facebook. If you've just joined, g'day, Adam. We are doing Open Mic Monday. It's a live peak performance coaching. You can ask me anything. By the way, yeah, it's public. So, uh, you know, like you can say, hey, on behalf of my friend, but look, really, take, seize this opportunity. Uh, I'm here and available. I'm helping people produce breakthrough results in their business and their life on a daily basis. I know a lot of people don't have the resources to invest in a one-on-one -on -one coach. I don't want that to be the reason you don't get something for yourself. So what are you dealing with? Write it in and, and let me provide something. Okay, show for Nanny. Thank you for being vulnerable and willing to write down a belief. You're saying there's no justice in the world. So that is a very firm, definitive belief. There is no justice in the world. And when you have that opinion, show for Nanny, here's what happens. By the way, here's what happened. Something happened in your past, it had to have, for you to go, there is no justice in the world. You saw something, you witnessed something personally, you experienced something, boom, in your universe, you made the decision, there is no justice in the world. That is your definition. And then that becomes your view of the world. There's no justice in the world. Remember, the number one benefit of the ego or the inner critic or the inner saboteur has to be right about our beliefs. So when you form a belief, whether it's empowering or disempowering, there's like there's no justice in the world, that's what you see because you, you're hardwired to be right about your beliefs. Now, our beliefs can fuel us to be evangelists and act and be of service and be, you know, be Nelson Mandela or Oprah Winfrey or other Mother Teresa if, you know, if we really believe uh, like there's no justice in the world and we want to do something about it, awesome. But if this belief is just disempowering and you find yourself in a stressful, angst, frustrated state, which I'm assuming, show for Nanny, you are, then you just got to get responsible that you have a belief that's disempowering you. And uh, it's very narrow and it's very one-sided and you will be the one that suffers. Catherine, hey, beautiful. Great to have you online. Open Mic Monday. Ask me anything about anything and let's provide some A's to your Q's. Uh, so, um, show for Nanny, I want you to see if you can engineer if your current belief from something that's happened in the past, it's really impacted and affected you, and I'm assuming, and from what I know of you, you're an empathetic person, so you feel people. So it's not okay with you that people have um, injustice happen, whether it was to you or others. So, but that's not, like, that's not a blanket rule. It's not everywhere. There are always two sides to the coin. So if you were to come, if you were to flip that and come up with an empowering belief, that would dispel that and give you access to see and feel things differently. What could you write? What could you write? So just see how you go and, and, and I want to see what you come up with because that's a very narrow point of view that will give you a very narrow experience. So if you're on Facebook watching this live, then please type in live. And if you're watching the record, just type in the record so I know when you're tuning in. I listening while driving, just pulled over. This reminded me of an earlier chat with you. He says, here's Stephen Bailey from Bailey Real Estate. And Chauffeur Nanny, I'm hanging out with you. I'm really waiting for your response. I'm listening while driving. Just pulled over. Thank you. I'm glad to know that you're not texting and driving. This reminded me of an earlier chat with you, and it's a good reminder that I still need to keep aware of. Yeah, victim of the past is still hanging around, and it's disempowering. Thank you, Stephen, for being so open and vulnerable. Hey, Greg, great to have you here too, my friend. I miss you. Um, 
listen, here's what I know. We have between 60 to uh, 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day. 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day. 85% of those thoughts are exactly the same thoughts that we had the, the day before. 80 to 90%. And 80% of them are negative, disempowering. It's just because a whole lot of stuff has happened in the past. We form these beliefs. They disempower us. They take away our power and our motivation and mojo and we don't like it here and we know it's not serving us and we feel stuck and it's impacting our health our wealth our relationships our connection our self-love our confidence our everything but we don't know what to do that's what we got to get straight about we are addicted to being right about our crap beliefs we are avoiding responsibility of showing up and doing anything differently we are staying safe and comfortable and familiar by the way when i say we i mean me too i'm evolving just like the rest of us right so this is not pointing the finger because when you point the finger there's three fingers pointing back that say me myself and i i'm i'm transforming just like you through 30 safe and comfortable we hang out in familiar territory that doesn't serve us five is we get to be a victim that means i don't have the power don't hang out there. You're a creator. The fact that you're here means you're a creator. Number, number, that's number four, sorry. Number five is significance. Because we feel like we're not good enough to varying degrees, we create unnecessary drama and swirl where we could be creating way more fun and empowering things. So thanks for sharing that, um, Stephen. I really appreciate it. Okay. Ooh, show for Nanny. She's come up with a belief. Everything can be resolved. How does that feel? I just got goosebumps. So here's your, here's your being, right? You're a cellular being. Every thought you, by the way, be careful what you say for you are listening because everything that you think and say, your body receives. It, it listens. It takes it on. Now, show for Nanny, if you're walking around your life going, there is no justice in the world, none, then guess what? Your experience of the world will be there's no justice in the world because you have to be right about it. And guess what, Chauffeur Nanny? You will go around like a chipmunk or a squirrel in winter gathering acorns of evidence. Look at that. See, there's no justice in the world. You'll watch the news. You'll listen to the you know, radio. You'll watch YouTube. You'll get on Facebook and then someone will tell you a story and you will attract because we attract what we believe. You will attract heaps of evidence so you can be right about that belief. I've asked you to flip it. I've asked you to come up with something way more empowering because it's a narrow belief. You've just come up with everything, like everything can be resolved. Boom, shakalaka. I believe that. Everything can be resolved and everything can be resolved inside of communication. There are three reasons we get upset. There are three things that really trigger us to, to get upset in the world. When we have expectations out there and they don't happen or with others and they don't happen, it would feel like unjust. One, two, when we don't communicate something, so something happens and we don't communicate our perspective, our point of view, our pain, our thoughts, and we swallow it and we disempower ourselves, you better believe it's going to make us upset. And the third one is when something interrupts our intentions being fulfilled, it's outside of our control. So, so show for nanny. Yeah. Connection and communication. That's what's possible when you change your belief to everything can be resolved. So whether there's no justice in the world happened to you, others, or, or, you know, someone close to you, that belief will limit you to be right and suffer and it keeps others suffering as well. When you flip and create an empowering belief, like everything can be resolved and it can be resolved inside of connection and communication, bang on. The next piece is courage. Are you courageous enough to have the conversation? Are you courageous enough to speak your truth even if your voice shakes? Are you courageous enough to jump on Facebook Live with no agenda, no script, no predetermined questions? I have to tell you guys, it's it's a vulnerable act to just say, hey, listen, I'm going to jump on Facebook Live and, you know, I have an ego too. So if people jump on and jump off, my ego is going, they don't like it. This isn't adding value. I'm waffling. This is not landing. It's not making sense. I could look really good and have some predetermined questions to make it seem like I'm super popular and I have people flooding these to me all the time. And then I could try to impress you or I could be really vulnerable and stand here live on Facebook and go, I'm available for you. I'm here for you. Really, I just don't believe in that crap of let me have it all looking perfect and sorted. 
I'd rather be here going, guys, I'm available for you. You've got any questions? I'll share some stuff that I learned today, that I experienced today, but I'm not just going to waffle to fill space because I want this to be valuable. So does that make sense? Does, does that make sense? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. So I'm going to give this two more minutes and um, <laughs> that's what we love about you. Ah, thanks, Chauffeur Nanny. Did that provide something for you? Um, and you can do this with every belief. I do really recommend timeline the significant things that happened to you, write down what you made it mean, what's the fundamental belief that you formulated as a result, and then, then flip it. You either want to be addicted to being right about it or you flip it and you create a new and empowering belief. David, g'day, David. Great to have you tune in. So I'm going to give this two minutes. you got two minutes, guys. Have you got any questions or concerns, especially if you're in real estate and you're currently navigating all those external things like the election coming up, negative gearing, banks tightening up lending, buyers, vendors cooling, competition, disruption, artificial intelligence. Is that on your mind or is there stuff also that you're dealing with that you would like a hand with? Because I'm going to stick around for a minute 30. <clears throat> Grant Mullins in the house. Talk about a man of positivity, always making beautiful comments on Instagram and Facebook. Grant, we are talking open mic night. This is where people send in their cues or ask their cues and I provide my best peak performing A's. We are about to wrap up in the next minute, my friend, but do you have a question? So Grant Mullen is my husband's uncle beautiful family member that, you know, who consciously spreads a lot of positivity on social media. I have never seen Mr. Mullen um, make derogatory or negative comments. So thanks, Grant, for being a beacon of love and light. I really do believe that the world needs it more than ever. So if there are no final questions, I'm going to go take my face off and uh, have a hot shower and catch up on some much needed rest. Please know that if you are uncomfortable using an open and public forum to ask any question and that may be the reason why you don't, then uh, send me a DM or flick me a comment and um, it's a direct message or email me at tanja, T-A-N-J-A, -A, at T-M-J Coaching and I will absolutely reverse engineer a Mindset Mastery Monday session for you without mentioning your name, your brand and where you're from. I'll just answer the question as best as I can. And if I feel I don't have the skill or ability or wisdom to answer it, I'll research the answer for you and I'll provide it. Uh, or I won't be tagging you. So all you just need to do is tune in. So I am uh, doing Mindset Mastery Monday every Monday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until tonight when I did it 8 p.m. because I did a, a speaking gig. So also... Hey, Akshay. Uh, also, Friday is Rapid Fire Friday where I reflect on the coaching sessions that I've had all week and um, I won't be doing that this Friday because I'll be speaking at the Real Estate Institute of South Australia gig. Oh, look at all that love, Akshay. You're a beautiful soul. So with that, my friends, um, I bid you adieu. Have an amazing week and as I like to say in the words of Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said. People will absolutely forget what you did, but people will never ever forget how you made them feel. So thanks for joining me for a conversation without an agenda. Thanks, um, Show for Nanny, for being brave and bold enough to answer, ask a question and do the work live on Instagram. Thanks, Stephen, for pulling over and for sharing that this was a good reminder for you and for everyone else that just jumped on and just were listening in the background. It's nice to know you were here. Whether there's one of you or 100,000 of you, I will show up no matter how I feel because I love you and I want you to be happy and live deeply fulfilling lives. Have a beautiful Monday night. Have an amazing week. Reach out if you need. I'm here for you. Take care and ciao to you on Facebook.